So the key question, do you want to buy the first rate cut? Joining me around the table to answer that question, Mike Wilson of Morgan Stanley, Noah Weisberger of AB Bernstein and Chad Morganlander of Washington Crossing Advisors. Mike Wilson, your answer to what is quite a complex question. Yeah, I mean, it's very complex, but the markets have been thinking about this for a long time. I mean, this is why we have an inverted curve. This is why the front end of the, you know, is, is basically priced the Fed already in many ways, at least a couple of cuts, hasn't priced, you know, a full-blown rate cutting cycle. And that's, that's what will determine what happens to equities. Is this the end of the cycle where the Fed is behind the curve and they're going to cut back towards zero? Or is this an insurance cut, something that can kind of kickstart the economy in a way that extends the cycle? Our view has been more of the former, that basically uh, we're closer to the end than I think people have recognized. Now, the market, the good news is the market has recognized this for over a year. You know, as we've discussed many times on the show, yep. the defensive rotation has probably been the most important thing to have gotten right as an equity investor over the last 12 months. And that basically is a barbell of bond proxies and secular growth stocks that are high quality. And I guess our concern now is that it's gotten really, it's gotten even more narrow. So the momentum factors are just out of control. And that really took off in the middle of April when commodity prices rolled over. We got some negative PMI data, the order rates, you know, rolled over. So all that stuff happened, by the way, before this latest trade tension. And that's the other thing I think folks are, you know, I think trade is almost a, like a distraction that's confusing people to say, hey, look, if, if we solve trade, then all is good. If the Fed cuts rates, all is good. And I think neither one of those matter, given where we are in the business cycle and where we are in the earnings cycle, that's going to have to play out either way. Noah, your thoughts? Yeah, I would, just to, to, to piggyback off that last comment on where we are in the earnings cycle, I think the, the balance here is, first of all, I'm not convinced that we are going to get a, a rate cut. Uh, secondly, and so I think there's scope for the market to be disappointed on that front, but even if we do get it, I think the trade-off then becomes, you know, how much am I willing to pay for stocks in an environment where we basically think that earnings growth continues to slow, and is there enough multiple juice from one more rate cut in advance of seeing the cycle turn around, right? Is the, is the Fed cut powerful enough to turn around the cycle? That's certainly an open question. But even before we get there, are you willing to pay a higher multiple for stocks or you're going to focus more on, on the slowing in earnings? I think we, we're going to focus on the latter. We have a moderate upside on our index target. And I would also echo the comment that I think a lot of the interesting action will be beneath the index uh, with dispersion on the rise, a trend that we think uh, can continue here. So we're in the later stages of an economic cycle. You get a Federal Reserve rate cut or two by the end of the year. A lot of that is dependent on trade talks. Uh, so investors should anticipate perhaps potential upside for the equity returns within the United States. We would stay overweight the U.S. at this inflection point. And in regard to the curve, we can see a a continuation of a modest move lower on the, on the entire curve over the course of the next six to 12 months.